If we take a look at a map of Switzerland, we'll find a small country nestled in the heart of Europe, without coasts, bordered by France, Germany, Austria, and Italy. Despite its small size, Switzerland is one of the few neutral countries in the world. This means that Switzerland doesn't fight anyone and no one fights it. In fact, the last time Switzerland participated in a war with another country was about 200 years ago. Can you imagine a country in the heart of Europe that did not participate in World War I or World War II? This is Switzerland's policy of neutrality. Switzerland is not a member of the European Union or NATO, and it only joined the United Nations in 2002. In fact, every country that joined the United Nations after Switzerland did not have an official existence before 2002, such as Montenegro and even North Korea. Switzerland has a rich history of military prowess and strength. In the Middle Ages, the Swiss warrior was known throughout Europe for their reputation, popularity, and loyalty. They were always being used as mercenaries or to serve other foreign armies like the French Kingdom during the Renaissance. One of the oldest Swiss military units in the world was established in 1506, which is the Swiss Papal Guard responsible for protecting the Vatican City and the Pope himself until today. Switzerland's geography is unique, and it can be divided into three different parts. In the south, we have the Swiss Alps, which are a giant range of mountains covering most of Switzerland's territories and separating it from Italy and Austria. In the west and north, you will find a range of mountains, which is a smaller group of mountains than the Swiss Alps, but large enough to separate Switzerland from France. Today, Switzerland remains neutral and has become a symbol of peace and stability in a world that's often fraught with conflict. Welcome to Switzerland, a land of determined citizens who realized that their strategic location in the middle of mountain ranges could protect them to some extent from any invasion. But that was not enough. They wanted anyone who thought of invading Switzerland to look at the map and say, thanks, but I don't want to play. And here the Swiss came up with an extremely smart plan to protect Switzerland from any invasion, and it was named initially. Every Swiss man between 18 and 34 years old has mandatory military service in the Swiss army. Even the official pacifist in the referendum of 2009 would tell you that Switzerland does not have an army, Switzerland is the army. Unless the whole country goes through 170 days of basic combat training and then enters the reserves. And that's not all. Anyone who enters mandatory military service until 2007 was required to keep all his equipment. So, when the training period ends, he keeps his military uniform, rifle, and ammunition. When the war breaks out, you also grab your military equipment and fight immediately. After 2007, they no longer take live. But it doesn't stop there. Where am I standing? Oh, a little further ahead. They will dig into the rock like this. They will build secret air bases hidden inside the mountains. Imagine an enemy plane flying over the mountains, completely unaware. Suddenly, a camouflage door opens and spreads out from inside the mountain range, and hundreds of fighter planes come out behind you, striking you and those behind you. And you have no idea. But what if the attack is coming from tanks on the ground rather than from the air? Basically, we'll talk. That means we'll place bombs and dynamite under all bridges and railways. Oh my god! What about citizens like me who don't have anything to do with this? If you're not a citizen, then we don't have anything to do with you. If you're not a citizen, you can go to Africa, but not Switzerland. And not just that, all the main roads along all the land entrances to Switzerland. This is our country, and we're thinking that in case of any enemy ground attack, they won't find any roads to walk on and enter Switzerland. But I have one question, who will fight you? The truth, my dear friend, is that this matter has a very strange paradox. Because Switzerland is one of the best countries in the world in terms of transportation and communication, and its trains are excellent in their punctuality and smooth movement on the railway lines that pass through tunnels and bridges designed professionally along the mountains. What's the paradox? The same countries that have booby-trapped all their roads and are ready to blow them up and destroy them. And that's the secret military plan that protects Switzerland. But why did the Swiss build such a robust defense system? 
Firstly, we must give credit to the enemy for their clever tactics in entering the area. However, the Swiss had a well-planned defense system that was difficult to breach. The concrete blocks on the ground were actually tank traps built during World War II in the shape of Swiss chocolate. These large and tapered shapes made it nearly impossible for any tank to pass through them. Additionally, hidden military bunkers disguised as houses housed heavy 105mm anti-tank guns, making them invisible to the enemy's eye. The locations and shapes of these bunkers were strategically hidden, causing the enemy to struggle and hold on tight. Moving forward, we learn about Switzerland's integrated defense system that was built to protect the northern Swiss Plateau region, where the majority of the Swiss population lived, and which bordered Nazi Germany personally. Hitler himself had a plan to invade Switzerland, called Operation Tannenbaum, seeing Switzerland's strategic location as a possible extension of his empire deep into the continent. In the event of a Nazi attack on Swiss cities located in the Swiss Plateau, destroying bridges, railways, and roads could hinder the Germans. However, the Swiss did not want to take the risk of confronting the Germans without having shelters to protect the population in case Hitler decided to invade Switzerland. Therefore, the determined Swiss population sought refuge in the mountains, which is something they know how to do well. Switzerland's engineering genius in digging is well known, along with their great clocks and trains. During World War II, the Swiss dug complete underground air bases inside the mountains, protecting themselves from attacks from the air. Switzerland is a country that has long prepared for potential invasions and conflicts, and their efforts have resulted in the largest and most secure network of shelters and bunkers in the world. However, Switzerland's policy towards war, especially towards Hitler and their relationship with Nazi Germany, has a dark side that is often overlooked. So, let's dive into the details and explore both the positive and negative aspects of Switzerland's aggressive neutrality policy. Switzerland's massive underground fortifications, the Swiss have already begun massive digging projects in the mountains to build large numbers of shelters, warehouses, fortified hospitals, and bunkers stocked with food, medicine, and weapons. These fortifications are accessed through an enormous network of tunnels dug deep beneath the Swiss soil, which provides quick access to these shelters and bunkers. It's important to note that these Swiss fortifications are considered the largest and most secure in the world, with approximately 140% of the Swiss population able to fit inside them in case of emergency. In the event of a crisis, Switzerland would enter its fortified hiding places, leaving 140% of its population outside. Switzerland has enough places to accommodate everyone, making it completely secure and closed off. Switzerland's policy of aggressive neutrality, Switzerland has long taken measures to prepare for potential invasions, having declared a policy of aggressive neutrality during the Second World War. This policy means that Switzerland will not take sides in any conflict involving the Allied or Axis powers. To ensure respect for its neutral position, Switzerland has made it clear that any army that uses its territory or airspace during a war will be attacked. In fact, the Swiss Army struck five German formations that penetrated Swiss airspace in 1944 and 16 Allied planes in 1943. Anyone who tries to cross here will be hit. Switzerland's aggressive neutrality policy and massive underground fortifications have made it one of the most secure countries in the world. But it's important to remember the dark side of this policy and the potential consequences it could have on international relations. During World War II, Switzerland maintained its neutrality, but it wasn't completely detached from the conflict. Switzerland supplied Nazi Germany with anti-aircraft guns and other military supplies, as well as ammunition that Germany needed during the war. Switzerland also allowed the Nazi regime to store and sell looted gold, paintings, and other valuable art pieces from war victims, including those from the Holocaust. This is a scary image of all the rings and jewelry that were in the hands of Holocaust victims, all gathered and going to a Swiss bank without disclosing their sources. Unfortunately, all of this money entered Swiss banks without disclosing their sources, and in exchange for foreign currencies, they were able to finance wars. Hitler had plans to invade Switzerland, but the country's heavily fortified defense system made it too costly for Germany to do so. Switzerland's advanced tunnel networks, military bases, and artificial rock slides all played a part in making it a difficult target. 
The country also has hidden hydroelectric dams and secret hideouts in the mountains, which were expensive to decommission, so the government sold them to individuals and companies for various purposes. Despite reducing some of its precautions after the Cold War, Switzerland remains neutral and a safe haven in the event of a global conflict. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope this information about Switzerland's history and defense strategies was informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting content, and I'll see you in the next video.